Okay, so now on to the next step, and this is um, building the skeleton, and later on weight painting it. Um, so we've got our model done, and we don't really need this um, this reference at the moment, so we can also move it to another layer. Okay, so now oh yes, we do need it. So move it back, and we need another image on this ref reference plane and you've seen that I've prepared um, this skeleton reference um, because it will be helpful now and now that we have it already lined up we can simply go ahead and um, model this, the bones uh, straight after the skeleton and we don't have to uh, think too much about the anatomy and where the bones would be because now we know where they are. So center the cursor and add armature. So um, now we'll have to keep a couple of things in mind. Uh, first of all, all um, armatures or all skeletons for Zoo Tycoon uh, need a BIP01 bone as the root and then we have a BIP01 non acum node as the second uh, node and this is what um, the then again this uh, non acum node is the parent of all uh, the nodes on the model that we will later have in game. Um, so now we will have to create the structure. So this should look more or less exactly like, or you should do it exactly like this. Um, so I've I've used um, the stick to grid option, holding Control down, and then moving it, and then it stays in the grid. And when we um, we have this one in a position like this, so um, the head is at um, zero y coordinate and the tail at one. Um, this is our bib zero one. So we name it and. Now we can um, duplicate it, and now we'll have to bring this one about the other side and move it diagonally down. And now this will be bib01 none. And we have to set it child of bib01. And now you can see um, this one's rotated in a weird way. We can also draw the axis and we see it more clearly. So we can hit uh, Control N to recalculate the normals and bring the z axis up. And now you see we've got this line here which shows uh, this bone is a child of that, the other bone. Okay, we can also go and extrude this bone if we want to. And here we can toggle whether the bone is connected to the parent or not. So we don't want it connected because this will become our pelvis bone. So we name it. and you can extrude the spine. So if you already name the first bone of your extrusion row, you save some time in the end because uh, you don't have to name them all completely from scratch. You know, just uh, change what's added in the end. Okay, now 
neck we'll have two neck bones and now the head and now the jaw bone so I'll just put it to stick you see um, here's where the joint is located it's not here this is where the muscle is attached so uh, the jaw rot rotates about exactly this point so we can just take this one duplicate it move it down here and make sure it's child of the head node and call it jaw so this is neck and this will be neck one neck and this is spine two this is spine one and this is spine okay in the same way we can go for the tail oh no I forgot to name the first bone so I have to do it manually on all of them So now we've got all the symmetrical uh, spine nodes that we need and now we can start with um, the leg. So we duplicate the spine node and bring it down here and up and now we call it thigh.l. So if we follow this um, blender naming convention, we can get um, we can get them to be mirrored automatically, and this saves a lot of work. Okay, so bring bring it down here, extrude it, and call it um, how do you call it? Mm. Um, let's call it lower leg L and then we'll call this one foot now we'll call this one horse link and then we'll call this one foot And we don't really need a bone for the individual toes because it's more or less all in one place. Okay, so now we can bring those out. And we can bring this one a little more in. Like this. And we can simply take the structure, copy it, move it here in front, and then again make it fit. Okay, and now we've got to change the parent, so this will be spine 2, and 
this is called clavicle and this is upper arm left and lo lower arm left and this is hand L. lower arm upper arm clavicle head jaw neck one neck spine two spine one spine tail tail one tail two tail three thigh lower leg horse link foot okay and now we need the ears so we simply duplicate the jawbone and move it up here bring it out and call it ear oh got two space bars here so call it and now what we could do is perhaps add um, some facial detail so uh, we could add a controller for the brows or um, for for the nose maybe um, yeah we, we can do that later on if we want to because it's hard to tell now how the result will will look like if we if we don't have the skin on so for now this will be okay as a skeleton we can add one more and that's um a rib or lung lung node so we can duplicate this one and bring it here and call it lungs out and maybe make it parent of spine one. Now we can go to pose mode and test how it looks like. Now it has to be parent of spine two. Probably. Now we'll see that later. Okay. Mm. So now we've got all our bones on one side. Oh, we, we got to make this one here um, match up. With the model. So now it's good. Okay, so we can go to the front and we select only the stuff that we have on um, on the left side and we duplicate it and turn on x-axis mirror and then we go on armature and move up here as no um, and then we go flip left right names and then we select all and if we move them they swap to uh, the correct position. Okay, so we can recalculate um, the Z value again. So it's up. Okay. So now we've got our skeleton more or less done, and we can start uh, weight painting it. So we have to um, select this and the armature and go control P make parent to armature and name groups and now one more thing we have to turn off envelopes here uh, because this will not work okay so now we can go to weight painting mode and now this one 
has become obsolete. Obsolete. And uh, um, so we move it out because it's it would be annoying to work with it now. We get to turn on X-ray mm. on the bones. And now we can start weight painting. So we'll just start down here. Turn on wireframe. Turn off soft and go to mix one weight and opacity also one and you simply paint over the whole paw in red okay so one more thing we can uh, rearrange the modifiers here so we make the armature modifier real and bring it down and then you can see that if we pose this one and pose the other one it already has the effect we want even though it's not not applied yet so this is relatively nice so you can see if you've got all the bone groups named correctly or if you've got a mistake somewhere so now we paint over this one and now we also paint over a portion of the draw um, of the pore so we get a blending gradient so here both influence this uh, row of vertices so you get it blending now we can use smaller weight and paint over these so we get an even better blending and we could even use the blur tool and blur it a bit. Not too much. This is too much. Um, so we remove this one again by setting opacity to zero and painting with mix. And blur it a bit more here. Oh, um, yeah. So now it has some kind of organic feel to it because it moves um, not like a robot, robot would do but like an animal would soft and then we go on up here so same procedure as usual paint it red And then paint the next one. Shoulder blade. So you can see this is important that you also blame, uh, paint over the body. Uh, some people don't really do this, and then you get uh, strange deformations on on the muscles. Because you see, if you move this bone, if you move uh, the the shoulder bone. Uh, you move this complete area and you don't just move this here so this is important that you keep that in mind and we can paint around this one with uh, 0.5 weight and maybe also down the middle here And we can also paint this one with 0.5. And down here because it gives us some weight. Yeah, now of course this looks weird as it is because we have to weight painted the, the spine nodes. And this is what we'll do now in a sec. And then it will look good. Yeah, this looks fine. Okay, now onto the spine. So we follow um, the the bone influence from um, f 
Okay, this is too far. So we go like this around. We we more or less avoid the area of influence of the shoulder because it really has to um, move on its own. Because now, okay, now of course this looks fucked up again because we didn't weight paint the neck. So now we've got this one painted and. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Doesn't behave as expected. Okay, well, I guess this is too much here. Yeah, so now you can see we're, we're getting there. It's not like uh, perfect yet, but it's coming along. So now we've got to add some more blur around the borders of the weight groups so that we get um, better deformations without too many artifacts. This looks plausible. Okay, so you can see this is too much clearly. And the same thing back here. We want a little of bit of influence on the middle and yeah, like this. And now we go go on blurring it here. And of course this should also influence the area behind. So kind of well okay we got to go on painting the spine. We'll go to mix once more. And give this one 0.5. Okay, now can go on blurring here. So this basically gives it a more plausible array of movement. So now, if you if you move it, you can see the deformations are are looking good like from here until say here okay so we can do a few things to improve that we give this one more weight and we remove this weight more or less so it behaves more naturally like this maybe we can reduce a little bit from here. And now you can see it deforms almost perfectly. We can add a little more here. And remove a little from here. 
and now it looks really good. We've got a wide range of undeformed movement. And it and it deforms the the neck and shoulder and spine area just like it's supposed to be and it looks quite fluent and organic and this is what we want to get. Now this one is a little bit too straight. Too much. Okay. So we've got okay this one is also too much, so we reuse it. Um especially around here. Actually this doesn't make sense because we've already got the spine to deform that part. So we can simply more or less leave it blank. And I think this looks better. And we can add a bit of influence here from the shoulder. So again we will get a better blend between the two. And now we can see this would be our lie down pose for the arm and it looks pretty good already. Uh, of course later on we might have to uh, do some slight alterations um, to the way painting so we can get um, uh, less deformed textures if we get deformed textures. Okay, so we'll just reset the rotation again. So we've got our rest pose back. Okay, so you see this is good. And then we can continue with the head. So we'll just start with the jaw and move it out so we can see the effect. Yeah, the jaw will influence all of this. Okay, so this is tricky. Or as an alternative, you could also um, go into edit mode and select all those vertices here and don't select these and then simply go on uh, make sure you've selected the right vertex group and then go to um, assign so here you can select the one you want or you can simply select it in weight paint and then you can assign those vertices here to that group okay uh, so we're going to add slight influence here. So this is a bit tricky because uh, the thylacine can or could open its jaw like uh, 120 degrees. So, so this is uh, massive, and we we can get uh, we've got to find a way to. Um, to make it work uh, without getting massive distortions. So at the moment you see we've got massive distortions and this is not what we want. We want to avoid this. So this is something we'll have to figure out and deal with it somehow. Okay. So Simply paint the rest of the head. So we can already blur this area here because we'll definitely need it blurred. There's no way around because we have so much draw deformation going on at the moment so we'll have to find a way to avoid this 
and we can go here. And of course, we've also got to paint the ears then. Um, just to give it a smooth bend. So now, red, complete ear. We want we don't want it to deform very much at the base, so we'll just give it a faint weight here. And this looks good. Plausible. It's nicely deforming. Yeah. Okay, so now we can go on dealing with the draw problem. Uh, so we can use the blur tool again. And if we just have a look at um, uh, Benjamin for a while, there's this famous photograph here, this um, yawning. Um, you can see that um, here it's it stretches down the skin from the upper drawer. Um, so yeah, we're going to take take the opportunity and blur this so it kind of resembles that. And we can also blur it more down here so we get a relatively smooth curve and we'll probably have to add some more loop probably around here simply because it has to extend over such a huge distance it's really unusual to, to have something like this so we've got to take special care with it And now you can see, if you bring up the head, the jaw itself seems to deform quite well, but we've got a problem down here, and this is not what we want because we painted um, influence on the head, and now this is giving problems. Okay, but it looks relatively good like this. Just check if that's actually 120 degrees. So minus 120, and you can see, yeah, well, that's pretty damn wide. Uh, so now we want to find a weight painting that uh, will give us deformations that look good on uh, this pose. So this will be quite tricky, I guess, but we'll have to find a way. So you can use the blur tool again. And you can see it's already much better than it used to be before. We can Blur some more.
Okay, so now let's reduce the influence onto the ear because we don't want the ear to move too much with the jaw, maybe a little bit. And now you can see this looks quite natural. At least that's what I'm thinking. So, this is more or less the way to go if you paint such a um, structure with um, such a great um, distortion. Okay, now I noticed something here. Uh, we have got way too much influence coming here from the from the head and we got we had distortion here and now it's fixed. We can even lower the influence here. And I think it's good. Of course we will have to check back later on when we have texture how it looks like. And we can Um, change this part here a bit. Also blur it because we've got a slight intersection, and of course this will give not so nice uh, shading results. So we try to avoid these kinds of things. So we can add some blur to the spine, just so it blends better. Simply by painting over the ends of its actual influence. So now onto spine zero and pelvis Uh, now we can paint the tail, which will be really quick and easy. Simply paint along and then in the second run um, add a little bit of blending, just really slight. I uh, now just go to post mode and take them all and now go to individual centers and we can see how nice it curls up. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Okay, so on to the leg. We start again from the End. The end. It's always easier if you start from the end, and um, because then you get get to see 
the deformations uh, in the chain as soon as you apply them if you go the other way around you you always get those distortions uh, if the end is not yet weight painted because um, then it simply stays in place like uh, like the middle here now stays in place okay so we want to reduce the influence of this a bit and uh, maybe here too and this already looks quite nice blur it a little bit okay here too okay that's good enough Next problem. Okay, so we're going to need a little blending here, that's for certain, and down here we need, well we need a little bit of influence here. And some influence there. We can blur it again. No. Nope. We have to do it manually. So we just add a really faint trace of weight. Uh, so we get a, a nice even result and same thing down here we can reduce this a bit and maybe add a little bit down here even more Okay, that's all right. The form is nice enough. Okay, now on to the very last bone, I think, and then we can already go on to test it and then continue with adding constraints. So of course here we will need a lot of influence on, on the skin flaps so the influence will probably extend somewhere as far down as here okay and blur it Blur tool is really useful for this kind of thing, so you simply paint first row, just paint huge influence, and then you gradually smoothen out the borders so you get nice uh, results that will deform nicely. Okay, so you can see the back looks pretty good already. You can do some more slight stuff here mm -hmm. okay but this here is definitely too much uh, so we go to let's say point five 
0.25 opacity and zero weight and mix paint over this until we're satisfied with the result. And now this seems to look quite plausible. I've got to blur a little bit more here. Again with full opacity. So now this looks good. Um, if we go here, we need a bit more careful weight painting from the spine, so we get less distortions on the forward move. And we can also blue this, blue this area here. And same for the pelvis. So simply we get some nice, nicely smoothing, smoothing transitions all the way around. And no sudden things of any kind. Just strong gradients or strong edges on weight painting uh, usually creates artifacts like this here is now it's not as strong anymore as it used to be, but it's still still there. So um, I mean I gotta blur it some more, or maybe look for flow and topology. Now it looks good. Okay, here's the problem. So this one has some influence here. Okay, now we can blur exactly what we want to blur. Okay. Yeah, now this one, this deforms really, really nicely. So you can see it goes all the way up here without really much of a problem. Just a few details here. It's too strong. So we can simply bring it down as well here. And I think that looks really good. Oh yeah, one more thing we forgot to paint the lung. Um, so just let's say 0.5 uh, and full opacity. Okay, so around here probably, and now we. Blur around the edges, and then we use the actual blur tool to give it a softer feel. So it's really nice, nicely soft, isn't it? and we don't influence our other weights um, in a way that will be. Um, Will be easy to notice, so shall not uh, disturb any of this here. So if we have a very fluid gradient on the other one, this will not cause any problems. And you can see now we can blur it a bit more here. Now you can see this looks more or less like breathing. It's still a bit weird for some reason. 
So we need a little more influence down here at the beginning. A little less on the side. No, yeah, that looks plausible. Okay. So now we've got all of the um, all of our groups. Arrange nicely, and we can test the posing now if we want to. And it seems to work out pretty well in most cases. Okay, here we've got a slight problem. This doesn't look so nice. So we can go ahead and add one more ring to blur it. And here as well, because the spine can sometimes bend in strong angles, so we have to make sure that this also looks good from all angles that we can possibly imagine. Okay, we can blur this area here a bit more because it wasn't blurred in the first place somehow. If I've got it. But now it is okay. Blow this one. Oh, we forgot to blow. Um, these so we'll add a ring of 0.25. Ah, it's too much stuff around. Okay, and here we also add a ring of 0.25. And this, oh, this doesn't quite do the trick, so we'll add one ring of 0.25 here. And instead, turn this one into a point five. And now we could even use blur to to increase the blending quality. So upper side blends nicely. Uh, now the lower part also blends nicely, and this is where we want to get one more thing here. Yeah, I, I think it performs really well now, so um, we're ready for the next step, and this is um, creating the constraints, so the model is, or the, the skeleton is ready for animation. So and this will be uh, the part of the next tutorial.